Okay, good morning, everyone. Hazak Baruch, thank you for joining us on this beautiful uh, Monday morning. Shavuot Tov, everybody. And here we go as we enter a new Pirasha, Pirashat Shelah. That's the name of our Pirasha. What does Shelah mean? Shelah means to send. Okay? Our Pirasha is called Shelah Lecha, where God tells Moshe Rabbeinu to send spies to the land of Israel. Here we are, just a couple of days away from the land of Israel. We enter the Promised Land. Moshe Rabbeinu builds the Beit HaMikdash, and we are in paradise, my friends. Golf all day, tennis all day, no, just kidding. Learning Torah all day, okay? And they mess it up. How do they mess it up? So, al Parashat tells us, they sent spies. Anything wrong with sending spies? Nothing wrong with sending spies. They, they want to send spies, and God gives them the green light. Shilach lech anashim. You want to go? Go ahead. Spy out the land. Matter of fact, later on, Moshe Rabbeinu does send spies and uh, he conquers certain cities. Yoshua Benun sends spies and he conquers the land of Israel. So sending spies is not something that is new. It's not something that's old. It's something that has been done and it's been fine. Nothing wrong with it. What happens is we know the spies come back and they report with a very negative report. They speak slander on the land of Israel. They say things like, these guys are huge, and people are dying right and left, which is exactly what was going on. People were dying right and left, okay? They said, this land is filled with disease. There's a monkey pox, right? All this stuff going on. People are dying. It's no good over there. It's a bad land. Right? And they spoke Lashonara. Now the truth is, we have to understand in today's class, because again, this is a very famous episode. This is the, the highlight of our parashah. There's a lot more we're going to hopefully speak about throughout the week. But this is the, this is the chicken and potatoes. The parashah that speaks about the spies and all of their slander on the land of Israel. And really we have to understand, what did the spies say already? You know, the aftermath is God says, yeah, you want to talk? And you guys will never see the land of Israel. I'm going to kill every single one of you. And you're going to be stuck in the desert for 40 more years till you all die out. And not only you guys, but every single generation for the next, for the rest of history. Tisha B'Av is going to be a day of mourning. It's going to be a day of sadness. And eventually, we know, it, it became the day that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. The same exact calendar date. So this day is a very sad day. It's the Perashah that we're in. Perashah Shelach. The first calamity ever to happen on Tisha B'Av was this tragedy of the spies. But we need to understand, my friends, what did they say that was so wrong? What did they say already? They said, right, let's, as an example, one of the things that they come back and say is, Eretz ochelet yosheveha hi. It's a land that devours, it consumes its consumers, okay? <laughs> okay, that's my line. Nobody take that one, okay? I just, I'm copywriting that. It consumed, it, consu it's co it, co it consumes its consumers. It's a land that it just, again, like we said, filled with disease and plagues and epidemics and pandemics and people dying. Were they lying, by the way? They weren't lying. They weren't lying. It's true. Everything that they said was true. People were dying. And where is, where is the fault of the Meraglim? And Rav, Rav Naiman, in his book, Darkei uh, Musad <clears throat> has over here, my friends, something very powerful to share. He says there are different levels of Emunah. Take a look, my friends. What is the lowest level of Emunah? I want you to think to yourself. What's the lowest level of faith in Hashem? Lowest level is a person that believes that God created the world. If you believe in that, that's good, but you're only on level one. You're a beginner. Because the truth of the matter is, it's very obvious, I think, that the world has a creator. If I show you a pen, okay, here we go. Take a look. This pen, somebody made this pen. Whoever, I don't know, who, I don't know his name, Mr. Bick, round stick, M, medium, okay, Mr. Bick, I don't know where he is, who he is, I don't know what he looks like, but it doesn't matter. I know that somebody created this pen. 
You put a can of Coke you go in the forest, you walk into the forest and you see a can of Coke, Coca-Cola, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that somebody was here first. Somebody must have placed a can of Coke here before me. You don't have to be a genius to know that. Somebody was here. The Rambam, he used to argue with his philosophers of the time. One time he said to them, listen, let's put aside these debates. I want to show you something. He pulls them into his office. He shows them a beautiful map. A map of the continents, the seven seas, colored, beautiful map. Can you imagine a map of the world? A thousand years ago, 800, 900 years ago, it's very, very advanced. They're looking at the map. They said, wow, who drew this for you? The Rambam says, you know, it's the strangest thing. I was here on the table writing, and all of a sudden, a wind came and spilled all of my uh, uh, paintings, my, the bottles of paint that I had over here, all the bottles of paint sitting on my desk, the wind just spilled them all over, the, and, the, and the ink just fell on a piece of paper, and it created this beautiful painting over here of the maps. This philosopher is looking at me like, come on, stop pulling out a string, all right? It, 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 tell us, who drew it? He says, I'm telling you, the paint just fell, and it made this painting by itself. He says, hello, it's impossible. A billion times if you spill paint, it's not going to create half of this painting. This is too complex for it to be random, for it to be an accident. Says the Rambam, listen to what you're saying with your own ears. If you guys can't even believe this map could be created by accident, so how could the world be created by accident? How could it be that there's no creator? There has to be. Every book has an author, every painting has a painter, has an artist. Every, uh, every depressed person has a mother. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, you know, every, everyone has. The world has a creator. This is what the Rambam's argument was. So lowest level is the earth has a creator. That's emunah peshuta. That's simple faith. Now there's a higher level, says Rav Naiman, on emunah. Higher level of emunah, you ready? What's higher than that? To believe, not only that the world has a creator, but to believe that even the things that I create are really Hashem. That's much harder. You know, it's very easy when you're in the desert and man is coming down for 40 years to say, you know, Hashem, thank you for this man. Thank you, Hashem, for bringing the bread from the heavens. Anyone doubt it? Of course, it's Hashem. Who else is it? It wasn't me. I didn't bring the bread from the heavens. So that's easy. But to believe when I go to work and I pick up the phone and I make a sale and I go to the customer and I present it and I do advertising and networking and I figure out how to showcase, and I figure out how to present, and I figure out what need, what product is needed by the consumer, and I sell it, and I start making a lot of money. To come at the end of the day, and to say, Hashem, I did nothing. Thank you for Parnasa. That's much harder. It's much easier to believe in Hashem when you're in the desert with the man. Much harder to believe in Hashem when you're working in your office, because it's very easy to say, I'm God. It's all me. What Hashem? I should give tzedakah for my hard-earned money and we forget that there's a partner. My friends, if you have a partner, right? We know every business has partners. Guy invests. He has someone who does the work. Someone else has the money. I'll give you the money. You do the work. We'll go 50-50. That happens all the time. It's a great transaction. It's a great arrangement. You, you figure this out, I'll figure that out. 50-50. Right? When a business has 50-50 partner, the, the income, the salary, goes 50% to one, 50% to the other. We forget that Hashem is a partner in our business. When God says, give ma'asir, we start saying, I don't know about 10%, I think 4%. Or, or we give 10% of what we were making 8, 10 years ago. What happened? Hashem's not a partner now? He was only a partner 10 years ago? 
What are you giving him 4% commission royalty? Really, Hashem should get 50%. But Hashem does us a favor. He says, take 90. All I want is 10. When a person fails to give ma'asir, they are lacking in level 2 of emunah. Level 2 emunah means to know that I did very, very little in this. Yes, I'm trying. Yes, I'm doing. But ultimately, the parnasa comes from above, from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The parnasa comes from Him. The bracha comes from Him. When I have emunah in that, when I'm strong in my faith, even though I did it, again, level one is knowing that Hashem did it. But that's easy. Level two is even though I did it, to know that Hashem did it. How did Hashem introduce Himself when He gave us the commandments? Remember, Moshe comes down and he says, here we go. You saw the movie? Everyone saw the movie, right? Okay, he comes down with the tablets and... Anochi Hashem Elokecha. Asher hoteticha me'eretz mitzrayim. What does the pasuk say? God introduces himself. Right? When you introduce yourself, you meet a girl, you meet a guy. How you doing? My name is Ariel Mizrahi. I'm one of the rabbis at Safra Synagogue. You know, you flex a little bit. You try to show off a little bit. How you doing? My name is so-and-so. I'm the CEO of a corporation worth X, X hundred million dollars. And I have... 85 employee, right? How does Hashem introduce himself? I am the God that took you out of Egypt. Now that's interesting. Because if I was God, I have a much bigger flex. If I was Hashem, I would say, I'm the God that created the world. What's bigger? What's more impressive? If you have a resume, if you have to write a resume for God, what's more impressive? God that created the world or God that took you out of Egypt? What's more impressive? I would say the world, no? Look around. The sun, the moon. I, I, go, to, I, I go to Banff and I see one, one mountain with a lake and I'm on cloud nine for a month. I can't get over it. It's so beautiful. Think about what Hashem created. That's in, that's in Canada. That's a small thing of Canada. Think about the rest of Canada. Think about the wonders that are all over America in, the, in Aspen and Yosemite and Yellowstone and Tahoe and, and all the different things. Then you have South, South America, right? Patagonia, you have all of these waterfalls, you have Niagara, then you have, forget about it, we didn't even, we didn't even get to the East, we're still in Americas. Then you have the Caribbean, think about Greenland and Iceland, the fjords. Think about what's going on over there in the Netherlands. And you have the wonders of Switzerland and the Alps. You have Croatia and, and Italy. and Ro You guys, I, I know my map a little bit, right? You guys, write, write these down. This is my list. Bezat Hashem, I'm going to do them one day, hopefully. Let's see. But uh, then you have Morocco. You have Africa, South Africa, Johannesburg and the Safari. We didn't even get to Asia. You have all the places in Asia. You have the Baltic Sea. Forget about it. This is the male Malaysia and everything. This is crazy stuff, right? The world is huge. It's beautiful. Hashem created all of this. This is not man-made. Central Park may be man-made. You know, you come to Central Park, you see it. Some guy made it. But the world is not man-made. Hashem created the world. Beautiful world. Then this is only this world, by the way. We didn't even get to space. There's also space. We forgot about that. You have guys now going to live there. They're buying real estate on the moon. People are going up. They're trying to get a piece of the action. And then you have the other planets. You have the other galaxies. This world is very, very small. There's other galaxies that we didn't even know about. So Hashem could have said, I am the God that created all the world. He didn't. What does he say? Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am the God that took you out of Egypt. Why does Hashem introduce Himself in such a way? This is the question that the commentaries have. There's many answers to this question. Many answers. One answer is, that's something that we could testify to. We could testify to the fact, whether or not 
He created the world. I don't know. I didn't see him. But I do know that he took me out of Egypt. That's one answer that's given. But according to this, says Rav Naiman, there's another answer. And that is that Hashem to say, I created the world. That's level one emunah. That's low level. But Hashem was aiming for higher. Hashem wants more from us. It's not enough to believe in that. You know what God wants us to believe? You know, even Egypt, leaving Misraim, it's very possible to, if you're, if you're a historian, you analyze how did the Jews leave Egypt? What happened? And some people, I'm sure, they could say, well, there was political uh, upheaval. There was chaos going on in the government. The king died. It was a changing of uh, regimes and of uh, guards and of this and of that. And this guy Moses, very charismatic. You know, the same way uh, other communities, talking about Juneteenth today, other communities were emancipated. African American community was emancipated. Who did it? Thanks to who? Who was the people involved? So I'm sure you go back to Egypt, you have people. Moshe, he was the Nelson Mandela of the time. He was very courageous. He knew, he had pull, he spoke. And there was some type of pandemic going on in the world at the time with, with different diseases that were affecting the water supply, that were affecting the animals. And it was just the right time, right person, right time, let him go. Says God, no, no, no. Anochi Hashem Elokecha Hashem Oseticha Me'eret Yisrael. I took you out of Egypt. Not Moshe. Not because of the diseases. Not because the Egypt was going through a political crisis. I took you out. And a Jew must always remember that. A Jew has to always remember, no matter how much effort we do, no matter how much hishtadlut we do, we always remember, it's never me. Never kohi ve'otem yadi. It's never my strength. It's always God. Hashem is there. That's level two of emunah. So we, we understand so far, we're going in order. Again, low level is to know Hashem created the world. Higher level is to know that Hashem is also doing and running the things that even it looks like I'm running. Right? The Ben Ishchai says, We know four people have to give thanks to Hashem. Who are the four, by the way? Let's go quickly through them. Who are the four people that have to say Agomel? So number one, number one, if you traveled over seas, right? Number two, if you traveled over a desert. Number three, somebody ill. Somebody was not feeling well. Somebody was in bed for a few days. Somebody had COVID. Seriously. They need to say Agomel as well. Yeah, thank Hashem. And number four, number four, somebody in captivity. Somebody was kidnapped. These could be found in the word Hayim. The Pasuk says, Vechola Hayim Yodu Chazela. What does Hayim stand for? Hayim stands for Habush, Yam, Isurim, Midbar. Somebody in captivity, somebody overseas, somebody who is sick, and somebody who travels over the wilderness. These are the four types of people that have to think HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And again, it used to be that if when we had the Beit HaMikdash, we made Amenu Amen, they would bring a korban toda. They would have to bring a thanksgiving offering. Today we don't have a korban toda. So instead, we get 10 men, 10 people, and you say Hagomel, and we thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the facts. Hagomel, let's, let's go to the bracha quickly. Right? We say, Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Master of the Universe. Hagomel lechayavim tovot. What does that mean? Hagomel means... To do acts of kindness. Like gemilut chasadim, right? So gomel means to do favors. So gomel, God does favors. Lechayavim. What's chayavim? Chayav is actually people that are guilty. We say how God does favors for us. Even though we're guilty. We have to know that by the way. We're guilty. We, have, we did averot. We don't really deserve kindness. Really, if we're honest... If we make a list and we go through our day, think about how much good we do, how much not so good we do. Really, if we're honest with ourselves, we realize that we're guilty. Chayav. 
But God does for us kindness even though we're chayav. He's gomer lechayavim tovot. Shegimalani kotuv who has done for me as well kindness. And then the ones listening respond. Ha'el shegimalcha kotuv. Hui gimalcha kotuv. Sela. The one that has done good for you shall keep giving and doing good for you. Sela. What Sela? Forever. Okay? So this is the bracha of Agomel that a person says. Says the Ben Yishchai. Why these people? Of all people, why them? And he says something phenomenal. Because these four people, to get out of their situation, whether it's someone at, at sea to arrive safely to shore, somebody sick, needed to get out of the hospital, somebody who is in captivity, somebody who's uh, in the desert, these people do a tremendous amount of hishtadlut, of effort. They have to pull a lot of strings. If, you're, if a person has COVID, the family members, they call this guy, I know this one of this hospital, I have pull over there, let's get him in, get him on a ventilator. We all know someone who knows someone, and we did a lot of hishtadlut to keep the person alive. Sailors at sea, how much they're doing? They're playing with the sails, turning, making phone calls. Guy who's in captivity, guy in the desert, all these people are doing a lot of hishtadlut. And, says the Ben Yishchai, it's very easy to forget that after it's all said and done, after we're saved and after we're rescued, a person could conclude, thank me! Thank me for setting you up with the right doctor. And the person right away says, Thank you, Hashem. It's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So this is level number two of Emunah. To know even the things that I'm doing, even those are coming from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Leha'amin. al adam yotzer b'moyadav. Even the things that we're creating with our very own hands. Even these things are things to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Melech, Ozer, Omoshia, Omagen. God will help us. He always helps us. However, we have to also remember, by the way, that person can take the opposite. person can take this, by the way, and then make a wrong turn. You ready for the wrong turn? A person can conclude and say, well, that's the case, then it's all Hashem. And I should do nothing. <clears throat> I shouldn't go. I shouldn't try. I shouldn't call. <clears throat> That's also wrong. Melech <inaudible> Ozer. What does it mean, Ozer? Ozer means he helps. But he only helps those who first help themselves. So first we have to do. We have to try. We have to put in the effort. And then Hashem <clears throat> will help. Okay? So that is level two. There is an even higher level, my friends. My friends, what is higher than this? What could be higher than knowing? Number one, it's uh, Hashem created the world. And number two, Hashem is the one that's doing and running even the things that it looks like I'm running. What could be higher than that? You ready? You ready for number three? When we see things in life, my friends, that don't make sense. Things that are a little bit odd. Things that don't really sit well with us. And to nonetheless believe and not ask questions. The highest level of emunah is not when everything makes sense. Emunah is not when it's all nice and dandy. Emunah is specifically when I can't wrap my finger around it. That's Emunah. The briskarov came to his dad. He said, Dad, to believe in Hashem? I don't understand. Who needs, who needs to be told to believe in Hashem? It's Pashut. It's Aleph Bet. It's ABC. It's simple. The, the littlest kid knows there's a God. How could you not? Everything is so perfect when the world is running. Everything, you see how there's everything to perfection. Like we said, a drawing. A drawing has to have a painter. Emunah, the God. Of course God created the world. 
And the rabbi said back to his son, Emunah is not when everything is perfect. Emunah is when it doesn't make sense. Emunah is when, God forbid, people are born that are not well. Emunah is when people are, get sick at a young age, at an old age. Righteous people, tzaddik veralo, when the righteous are suffering, that's emunah. Emunah is when difficulty hits, when tragedy strikes, to be able to say, I don't understand, Rabbi, but if that's what Hashem wants, and that's what Hashem wants. Our rabbis tell us, look at this line, Kol HaKtuvim Kodesh. All of the writings of Tanakh, we know we have the books of Tanakh, 24 books, right? The five books of, of the Torah, and then the 11 books of, excuse me, the eight books of prophets, and the 11 books of writings, okay? 5, 8, 11 is 24. So our rabbis tell us all of the books are holy, but what's the holiest, what's the holy of holies, if you will? What's the Kodesh HaKodashim? Shir HaShirim. Our rabbis tell us all the books are holy, but Shir HaShirim is the holy of holies. And he explains over here all of the other songs. We have many songs in our Torah. As an example, Shirat HaYam, the song that the Jewish people sang when they crossed the sea. Shirat David and Dvora, when David was saved, when Devorah was saved, the songs that they sung, our rabbis say, those are holy. That's okay. That's nice. That doesn't require a lot of faith. You don't have to have a high level of munah to thank Hashem when things are going well, when everything is okay. That's easy. When you're making money in business, when people are calling you, when your popularity rating is high, that's easy. Remember Eov, my friends? Eov, one of the 24 books of the Tanakh. Eov was a guy who was very religious, very righteous. And God was bragging about Eov, saying to Satan, Look at Eov, isn't he a good guy? And what did Satan say? Of course he's a good guy. The guy is living life. His beautiful wife, beautiful kids, money, health. Of course he's high on life. Of course he's praying every day. Challenges take away his health and then see if he prays. And that's the whole book. The rest of Eov goes through Eov debating because he loses everything in the first chapter. He ends up losing his, his kids. He, unfortunately, but not, he loses his health, he loses his money, he loses everything. And Eov struggles tremendously and he's he struggles philosophically. How could God do this to me? But the rest of the book, that's that's real, that's a high, that's the highest level. To say to Hashem, thank you for the bad things in my life. Because I know that you're behind there, even there, even there you're behind the, the, the scenes. Even on those things that are not going well. All the books are holy. To say to Hashem, thank you for crossing the sea, easy. Holy. But Shir Hashirim, a book that's discussing the Jewish people in Galut, Ben Shaddai Yalin, how we are in between the two Beit HaMikdash, how we are in between Galut. That's difficult. To love Hashem, to say thank you when life is hard. Not when I'm making money, when I'm losing money. When Bitcoin is down more than 50%. And crypto, forget about it. And all the other stocks and NFTs and everything is just garbage down. And to say, Hashem, thank you. I love you. I believe in you. That's the highest level. David HaMelech, David HaMelech says, Kos Yeshuot Esa Ubshem Adonai Ekra. That means I raise the cup of victory. Kos, the cup, I raise Lechaim. And I call out in the name of God. David HaMelech was the author of Tehillim, of Psalms. David HaMelech wrote many, many, many chapters of thanks to Hashem. One of the greatest poets in history. And the Gemara tells us very interestingly that actually, Nebuchadnezzar, remember him? The guy who was going to destroy the Beit HaMikdash. The Gemara tells us that he was almost about to one-up David in praising Hashem. 
He was about to praise God in a manner greater than David until God quickly sent the angel Gabriel to slap him on the mouth and to shut him up. Now this sounds a little bit like unfair, right? This is, uh, this is Jewish uh, favoritism. What does it mean? If, if Nebuchadnezzar is going to praise God better than David, then so be it. Give credit where credit is due. If he's going to outdo David, then let him outdo David. That's David's problem. Isn't it good in life to have competition? Imagine somebody's about to break the world record, and then the judge comes and stops the game, stops the clock. Well, it's not fair. You wanna, that, that means you're biased. You want the other guy to have the record. Hashem wants David to have the record. Is that true? Why would he send someone to stop Nebuchadnezzar? If, if, if Nebuchadnezzar is doing okay, let him do okay. Let him, let him praise Hashem. Why you got to stop him? Our well, rabbis explain that Hashem wasn't coming to stop Nebuchadnezzar. But there was a very big difference between David and Nebuchadnezzar. You see, David is praising Hashem. But David praises Hashem even in moments of life that are difficult, that are tragic, that are unfair. Tehillim is not all nice and dandy. David's not only writing songs when he gets married, when he has children. David's writing songs when he's running away from his son who wants to kill him. David's writing songs when, he want, when he's chased by his family members that they want to throw him out of the family. That's what David's writing. David's writing songs about even the worst of times. There's a book that begins with a very famous line. Maybe you know the book. Towards the best of times. Finish the sentence. Towards the best of times. Towards the worst of times. Right? The greatness of David HaMelech is that he was able to sing in the best of times. He was able to sing in the worst of times. No matter what David HaMelech was experiencing in his life, he thanked Hashem. Kos Yeshuot Esa. When I'm holding a cup, I thank God. And then he has another pasuk. Tsara ve'yagon emtsa. Even when I'm going through tsara. What's tsara? Tsara is tragedy. Pain. David says to Hashem, thank you even in the moments of pain and crisis. That's the greatness of David. In the best of times and in the worst of times. And the truth is, that's what God was telling Gabriel to do with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was ready to praise Hashem in the best of times. God says, but you know what? Let's see how does he act when it's the worst of times. Go and slap his mouth. Go and give him a little bit of affliction. Hit his, hit his wallet a little bit. Give him a little bit of pain, a little bit of illness, a little bit of sickness. Let's see how he does then. Does he still praise me? Does he still love me thick and thin no matter what? Is that, because that's, that's a much higher level. That's what David was able to do. And if Nebuchadnezzar could still praise me then, then we'll give him the trophy. Then he deserves the gold. But he didn't. The second he slapped his mouth, Nebuchadnezzar, ah, Hashem, who needs you? Who needs you? Thanks for nothing. This is the, unfortunately, it's something that we all struggle with. We all know how to turn and say, Hashem, great, we love you. When things are good. But we also must learn to follow Hashem even when it doesn't make sense. Avraham Avinu. You know why he's the father of our people? Because Avraham is told by God to take his son, his only son, the one that was promised he's going to be the legacy of the Jewish people. And sacrifice that son. Sacrifice the son that I promised was going to live. Now I want you to sacrifice him. I changed my mind, says God. And if I was Abraham, I would say, uh, listen, God, what happened to our deal? I just want to know. Abraham didn't ask. Abraham followed. Your wish is my command. Makes sense, doesn't make sense. It's irrelevant. That is the highest level of Imuna. We come back and we see over here when it comes to the spies, now we understand. We asked in the beginning, 
You know, this land, what's, what's the spies' fault? They saw there was tragedy. They saw crisis. They saw bad things. What do you want them to do? And the answer is, if they were holding on the highest level of Imunah, if they were really where they were supposed to be, then they would have known, even though it looks bad, but if Hashem deemed it, if Hashem decreed it, if Hashem is sending us to this land of Israel, it could look bad. It could look like there's disease. It could look like there's giants. Maybe to my eyes, to my mind, it doesn't make sense. But if that's what God wants, then that's what I'm going to do. And the Jewish people were missing on this level of emunah. The highest level they didn't have. Now why they were missing? Why didn't they have it? How could they go wrong? So that's what Rav Moshe Feinstein says. Rav Moshe Feinstein says, because their emunah was not something that they worked for. Their emunah was something that was handed to them. The miracles that they saw at Yam Suf, they didn't work on getting there. When God does miracles, if someone's going to, in life we say, easy come, easy go. If you're going to lose a lot of weight in one week, I can guarantee you, you're going, to get, you're going to gain back that weight just as fast, if not faster. Because in life, things don't come easy. Ask any successful businessman. There are hard weeks. There are hard months. There are hard years. It's difficult. Difficult to lose weight. Difficult to build muscle. Difficult to have an easy marriage, a good marriage. Easy come, easy go. Good things in life are not easy. To have him Munan Hashem that comes with miracles and easy, that's not going to last. The Jewish people were floored because their emunah was handed to them. We have to work on our emunah, on our belief. And therefore, the spies and this generation, because they didn't work on it, so we believe what we see. But the second there's something that looks a little bit scary or dangerous, the emunah is right out the window. When they see the giants in the land of Israel, they collapse. When they were hungry last week and all of a sudden they needed some food, could God provide for us? We don't know. What do you mean you don't know? He's giving you man. He's giving you bread. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. Because I only know what I see. Because I have low-level emunah. My emunah is something that I worked for. Something that was given to me, it was handed to me, it was free. Free things, be very careful, you get what you pay for in life. So, so the Jewish people didn't have the faith that they needed to trust in Hashem, even in the worst of times. Because the emunah as it was, was a very uh, shallow type of emunah. So this is how Rav Naiman explains the uh, beautiful episode of uh the, uh, the tragic episode of the spies, how, how are they able to go to such a low level? The answer is their mistake. Even though they saw what they saw, nothing wrong. It looks bad. But they were, they were expected to know past that. It also looked bad to Avraham when God said, sacrifice your son. But Avraham said, it, okay, it looks bad. But Hashem's running, Hashem's in charge. If it looks bad, it doesn't matter. That's what Emunah is. Emunah, my friends, is in the best of times and in the worst of times. There's a story told, Rabbi Pesach Kron brings it down, of a lady who unfortunately was diagnosed with a very severe illness. And um, the doctors, one day they came in, they told her that she has very little time to live. You could imagine the pain in her, the pain in her family. Her kids were around listening and they started crying. Mommy, why you? Why you? Why is Hashem doing this to you? The mother said, you know, I want to tell you something. I grew up, my schooling was very easy. What took other girls a long time to understand, I understood very quickly. I was very smart. I never asked Hashem, why me? I never complained. That I was very smart. Why me? When I was applying for, when I signed up for choir, I made the cut. I got a leading role. I had a beautiful voice. I never complained. Hashem, why me? 
It's not fair. Why me? I never, I never asked why me. I got older. I started applying to college. I got into any college I wanted. I never complained. I said, Hashem, why me? When I came to have a shiduchim, I found a shiduch very quickly. I didn't say, Hashem, why me? When it came time to having children, Hashem blessed me with beautiful children. I didn't say, why me? Now that for the first time in my life, finally something is going bad. Now that something is not going the way that I would have wanted. I'm not all of a sudden going to ask Hashem, why me? The same Hashem that did for me in the good is doing for me now. This is, my friends, the highest level of emunah that's demanded of us. May we always be zocheh to have blessing, to have health, to have parnasah, to have sheva, to have all the good things in life, but to always know that no matter what comes our way, in the best of times and in the worst of times, that Hashem is there, Hashem is holding our hand, Hashem is the one that is giving us these challenges that we are experiencing. When a person knows that and remembers that, they'll be able to overcome no matter what challenge comes their way because they are holding on to their emunah. We'll stop over here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.